In local poultry, they are easy to maintain, they are easy to feed, and even though you fail to maintain them, actually you just put them on a free range system. First of all, I'm a graduate. I graduated 10 years back, that was 2013, at YMCA, one day I then came to realize that I had to do something, though at that time, it was very hard to know what you could do. I looked for jobs for four to five years. I couldn't find any job. Jobs were nowhere to be seen. I tried to call my friend, and everyone was like, we can't help you out. So that's when I engaged into restaurants because I had some ideas in food industry, things like that. So I started working with my mom because she's into restaurants. Then after some time, still things were not going on well. I did another course in pastry and bakery at YWCA still there in Wandegaya. So after six months of doing that course, I tried to, to make some work, me as a person, individually. So I was like, let me self-employ myself. So I started making daddies, pieces, baguillas, such kind of crunchy things. But still you could get money just to eat, transport, just on daily basis. And at that time I had got married. I had responsibilities as a mother still at the same time. I had a family to care of, like my mom, my dad, and besides all that, and I'm a woman who had dreams. So I was like, what could I do? Still, I went back in that field of journalism. There is some media companies, a few, actually there were two. They called me up, they wanted to assign me, but when I looked into the salary, seriously, I couldn't make it with them because it was just a 500 digit, as you know, this economy in our country. So that's when I was like, no, I'm going to just waste time because I needed serious money. That's when I got an idea of going abroad. And when I was going abroad, there are a few friends I used to see. They used to go come back, go come back. They were building houses, driving good cars, and I was like, man, how did you make it? All of them were like, I went to Dubai, I went to Saudi Arabia, I went to Jordan. So that's when I found one of the companies. I joined Saudi Arabia as a housemaid, this so-called Kadama. So I was there before, for four years. So, you know, as we, there in Saudi Arabia, we always get time during our leisure. So I was on internet. That's when I found one of the platforms on YouTube for my mentor called Mr. Lubwama. So I was so inspired. But before that, I had friends who were already engaged into poultry. But some of them were doing broilers, layers. But sometimes we could talk and you could be like, how is it, how is it going, you understand. But most of them, I could just analyze only their problems, how they make it profit-wise. And I then found it later that local poultry was the best option. So I got inspired. I went in for classes. Till when today, I decided to start this, what you're going to see right now. So that's how I started. Hybrids, you'll find like broilers, layers, broilers. But in local system, we just have only this, what we call in Kokenganda specifically. So you may find the difference is, actually they don't have much differences. But still, there are a few points I'm going to analyze. In local poultry, they are easy to maintain. They are easy to feed. And even though you fail to maintain them, actually, you just put them on a free range system. Like as you see here right now, this is what we call a deep litter system. You keep them inside, you give them breakfast here. For us, we call it breakfast. Because I take these ones to be human. Because I love them so much, and this is my job. The way I love to be well off, it's the same way I love these birds to be well as me because they are doing a great job on my side they give me good money so i feed them breakfast i give them lunch i give them dinner you may find that if you fail you just have to switch you put them on a free range system that means that they will start feeding themselves not compared to these other breeds secondly they are easy to maintain in in terms of medication if they fall sick you may find it that sometimes you have to go to the vet they tell you maybe you have to use this you have to use that but still if you don't have money it is easy for you to say that let me get some alvarai you give it to them into water most times i always tell my clients i i, I give these buds i always tell them always be keen on the poop they are producing that's when you know that they are sick but these local breeds they can fall sick even for two weeks when you don't know 
So you just have to look at the poop, you see why is it red? Why is it choking? Why is it so watery? Then that's when you find a reason that maybe they are sick, but you can never find them when they are seated like other breeds. Other breeds you may find if they get flu, the, the whole flock falls down. Other breeds you find them when they have cough, you find all the penthouse just seated down, not compared to these ones. And another thing, these ones, they are so productive in everything. They give you meat, they give you eggs. Not only that, they can go everywhere. They always have market. If you are going for introduction, you just come, you take. Birthdays, what, everywhere they go. But you can't take these other breeds. Though I, I, I don't want to mention them, but you can't compare them on this one. So that is the difference between these local breeds. If you are going to get money, you can start getting money from 500, 1 million, two million, just like that. Don't compare to other breeds. Like for example, last time we sold 250 birds, but I got 7.5 million, just out of 250. Not compared to other breeds. That is the difference I, I can tell. Actually, we have many infrastructures, but it, it depends on which infrastructure you want. Most times, when I get in more clients, most times they always call me, Makula, I want to do this, I want to do that. But I always ask you, how many birds are you going to keep? That is a good question. So you may find someone when he or she wants to start this local poultry business. But when he or she just wants like 10 or 5, still you can tell someone you can do something like this, something small. You can spend like 20k, 30k, 50k. But still you'll find another person when he or she wants 1,000 birds, another one 300, 200, so it depends. That's when I tell you how many birds do you want. So if you tell me the amount you want, then I'll tell you, go in for it, go in for this. Like this structure you see, it accommodates 300. That means that you have to own your land. And I always tell that to my clients who come in, you have to have land. Because if you don't have land, trust me, you can't do local poultry business. I'm telling you, you can't. I've ever seen a scene somewhere. There is a woman who started local poultry business. After a while, the owner of the land came and he was like, Madam, I want to use my land. After the business had grown, so the woman was so disappointed. So all in all, before you start thinking about doing local poultry business, first think about land. If you don't have money to buy land, just ignore local poultry. First of all, you have to be patient. They are not like broilers that you're going to keep them for four weeks, then you sell them into the market. For broilers, you can rent a place, not, but not local breeds. So I always tell my clients, if you are going into local poultry business, always find land. That is number one. You have to build with capital. If you don't have capital, you can't build all this. You can't. So you have to have capital. You have to own your land. Three, labor. You can't construct it alone. Unless when you're going to keep only two birds, all five, all ten. But still, you need, uh, you, you need, you have to need someone help you out. So that is my point. Number four, you have to seek knowledge. Most people, they come, they tell you, Makula, I want you to come on my farm. You go on, on someone's farm as if it's a house, I'm telling you. And you are like, what did you build? That I was building a penthouse. Can you imagine someone doing that, that I was building a penthouse? Because they don't know how to... Some of them, they, they don't make research, by the way. That's why they end up doing mistakes. So first of all, before you go into that business, make sure you do research, you have your land, you get capital, and you have enough labor so that you can do something nice. But whatever thing you have, you can build a good infrastructure as long as it can accommodate that amount of birds you want. Here, in our country, we don't have botanical names like in other breeds. In other breeds, you're going to find they have sasso, they have trailers, they have layers. So someone would be like, I'm going in for layers because it can lay eggs. I'm going to earn money there. You find another one, I'm going in for croilers because it is for meat. You understand? But in our local poultry business, trust me, we don't have those botanical names. And you may find out the names we always call them, uh, you are going to see, there is another cock there, it is red in color, we call it Lujumba. If someone wants it, 
I'll ask him, well, how, why do you want it? Because if someone comes, I, I need that red one. I know there is a reason as to why he, he or she is asking for that breed. So I'll tell you, I need 70,000 shilling. Still, I'm benefiting. Not compared to other what? Other breeds. We have this, Kakofu. I'll tell you, I need 60,000. All of them, they are beneficial. We have Chivuvu, we have Lushivu. They are small in size, but they are the most laying hens we have here. In our local poultry business, they don't lay every day, like layers, they do. They can miss like five times in a month. A good laying hen, you'll find it laying 25 eggs a month. But these so-called Lusubi, Chivuvu, they lay every day, they don't miss out. So on my side, they are suitable. Still, they are productive. So I can't differentiate. All of them, they are productive in my local poultry business. At the same time, if I lack money, I can decide to sell only cocks at 40,000 shillings. At the same time, if I decide to sell eggs, still I'll sell eggs. I'll sell fertilized eggs. I'll sell no more eggs. At the same time, if I want to sell these hens, and these ones, they are more expensive than these cocks. Because everyone wants this one, which is already for laying, you understand? So I'll just benefit. I can't tell that this one is the most qualified to be the most suitable. So all of them, they are beneficial. All of them, they are good. That's why I find it good and important into my local poultry business. We get many clients, I've told you. You may find this one when he or she wants only five. You find another one, a hundred. You find another one, two hundred. So it depends on the quantity, on how many you want. So if you want ten, I'll tell you just you need maybe like a hundred k. If you want 100, I'll tell you at least you have 5 million aside with you. If you want like 300, roughly you have to be with like 15 million. If you want like 500, you have to be like with 16 to 18. You understand? But I always tell people, let's not focus on that amount of money. Because some of these people, if you tell them 15 million, they'll just run away. Even as we didn't start, with all that money. Me, I was just a monthly earner, getting 900 as a salary abroad. But I always had something into my mind. If, um, uh, if, if I finish up this contract, what am I going to do next? You understand? What if I go back? What am I going to do? This is just a contract for two years. So I had to wake up. I decided to do this project. But sometimes I could save only 500k, 600k, 300k, but still I was running the business. So it doesn't need you to be with much money. Even if you have 200k, 400k, you can start up this project. It's just a matter of how many hens do you want to start with. But even though you want 200, actually, if you start up with 100 chicks, just 300 is enough for you to feed them every month. With transportation costs, with vaccination and feeds, you understand? And sometimes you may find feeds are high, feeds are low. So if feeds are low, we advise you to stock. If they are high, then you go with the flow. And in this local poultry business, if you fail to get money, like I told you, you can do free range. So it doesn't need you like to be with much money. But if you have, you can do a good infrastructure. But sometimes our quotation go in. If you have 100 birds, you have to be with 1 million to build a good penthouse. 200, 2 million. 300, 3 million. 400 birds, 4 million to build a house. So feeding is just easy. If you fail, just put them on a free range system. You guys, you don't have to worry about feeding and infrastructures. The question is, how many birds do you want to start with? So the amount you want, it is the thing which gives you what to do. But I always told you, in local poultry business, it is something good and nice. After infrastructure, after knowing how many birds you want to start with, you always have to have drinkers, you have to get feeders and laying cages later on where they have to lay their eggs because that is a process. Whether you like it or not, they have to lay eggs. You have to get trays. Some of you are going to ask trays for what? When we are going into brooder, we always advise our clients to get trays in the first two weeks. Why? They are easy to feed our chicks, not compared to these feeders, because these ones are big. And you find the other other chicks, they are still babies. These trays, 
they are good for them. And you can know the amount of food they have eaten. For the beginners, if you are coming into this local poultry business, there are things you have to know first. Number one, make research. That is the most, most important thing. Don't go in for local poultry business or don't go in for any business without making research. You'll go in for it, you'll make losses, then later on you say, I didn't benefit. Make research first. Two, you have to get capital. You people, you can't do business without capital. Even though you're going to sell chapatis, even though you're going into charcoal business, still you have to get capital. Yes, you're going to come on our farm, we are going to teach you, but still even us, we can go on and learn. Because every day things are changing. Today you're going to find that Kafika is producing these feeds. Tomorrow you find that there is another company producing these feeds. So every time you have to be updated. So the people I, I, I told two months ago, they are not the same people I'm going to teach today. So those last people, you're going to find that I gave them another knowledge and even these people another knowledge. So visit these feeders. Eh? They'll tell you how, how they mix food, how to save. But most important thing, make research, go and learn, go and study get new ideas, take time, find capital, find a good structure. And by the way, know how many birds you are going to start with. Will you manage them all known? Because here, if you come at our farm, we always ask you, how many birds do you want? How much do you save? What is your income monthly? So someone you may find wants 100 and you are like, no, you can't cope up. I would advise you, you start with 50. And someone is like, okay, I was going to do that mistake. So it is very, very key to know what you're going to start with. So the number of bad matters. Knowledge and wisdom matters. Knowing how to mix the feed, that is also mattering. And even going in for nearby farmers, asking about what you don't know. Trust me, you'll make it.